Do it well, rock your ball, baby. Exterminate it. Exterminate. Exterminate. Yeah, so it's a great ending with all that music, and then we see the red TARDIS and the cloister bells. Yeah. Boom. Love the cloister bells. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Such a great sound. Well, really? not a great sound if you hear them, but, you know, it's, it's good. Yeah. It is. It's good. And it, yeah, it's just so depressing, this story. How, like, dark and... But it's so blimmin' well done. Like, all the point, most of the points which I pointed out can either be explained to some degree or like the nitpicks like yeah the, i have very it, I have it doesn't much, really take away from the story it's just me really going into the world and just I questioning pretty it pretty much have no major fault at all with it actually to be honest yeah they're just nitpicks like yeah, everything i have written down here is that nitpicks like monster was kind of okay you know what was the reason behind the woman doing it Mm. Like, what does she get out of it? Like, money? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like, I said, like, every moment, like, every moment is paced beautifully. Like, there's something happening in every moment. Like, even if you have a bit of time with the family, like, it's something always happens. Something, something happens. Yeah. Something is always or happening. Or it's trying to lift your spirits to then just crush them in the next Crush them again. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, I like, couldn't get any sadder after the Torchwood lot got killed. <laughs> like Sarah Jane one gutted me like yeah. loads. I was I was just like killing me now. And and the whole Martha thing was actually kind of tragic as well. But like giving yeah. her last little bit of yeah. oxygen to that guy. To that guy, yeah. It's so depressing. It really is. As I said at the beginning, like I, I, I can't, in a way, I kind of I mean, it, I mean the, this um. The way this does it makes it very unique, but also you're kind of interested to see how it happened in like other situations. Yeah, other companions like Sarah Jane. Yeah. yeah All the things that would have happened. Different. The dinosaurs would have stayed. Mm. Uh, yeah, the dinosaurs would have ruled after nobody would have existed because <laughs> invasion of the dinosaurs and time warrior. She didn't exist. Time warrior stuff. Mm. But yeah, That's true. No, okay. it's just fantastic. It's Unique concept. So yeah, three good points. Ooh, 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 ooh. And three best points. <laughs> uh, so much. Mine would go the acting of the main cast, including and Jacqueline King as Sylvia. Mm. Like she aces it. Um, yeah, Grandpa. Yeah, you know, is what's his name again? <laughs> Bernard Wolf. Cribbins. That's Wolf. it. A Bernard Cribbings, I'm the getting actor. actor's name, yeah. He is, he, he does okay, but it's not where he shines the most. He was better in Sontaran Experiment. It's when, when he's more given a comical, or like a, his header in uh, the end of like Journey's End when the Earth gets back and he heads the orange. Mm. He is, but like for like trying to get that depressed feel across, Jacqueline King aces yeah, it as, no. as Sylvia. That's, yeah, so, and the acting, Donna's great, you know, Catherine Tate as Donna, and Billy Piper as Rose is great, um, and it, we, uh, you didn't really kind of miss the Doctor in this story, because it was purposely a Doctor-like story to be, like, mm -hmm. and it was a good concept to not have the Doctor in it, because yeah, it needs to but it was also the most important thing about this episode, in yeah. a way, because, like, if it would centre around, what if the Doctor wasn't here, what if, yeah, at all, like... Sure, episodes can, and certain facts can be defeated by, like, Sarah Jane and Torchwood, but the Doctor is at the centre of this all, you know. We need if it, he's not there... Yeah, I'd say... Yeah, uh, the general setup of the story and how inventive it was, like, it's never been done before. How has this not been done before? It's such a good storyline. How mm. did someone not think of that? Um, and... Oh, I'd say its continuity is pretty damn good as well. I'd say that's a really good point because it kind of makes you feel good, kind of watching all of it. Yeah. From like you know series one all the way up. Well, you only need to watch from Runaway Bride onwards, but you know it still feels kind of well no because there's Rose Tyler in it, isn't there? So it's kind of it's worth watching all the way. You feel kind of rewarded. Yeah. That's what Journey's End and you know was a lot. The Stolen Earth and Journey's End. It was a lot kind of it was it was fan pleasing but a good story and it made you feel worth it. I mean, I wish I'd watched Torchwood in those years, 2006 and seven. so then 2000, you know, so this was, like, everything. Because, I mean, Torchwood, I was a bit like, oh, 
game don't really know them though so because i was too young to watch it obviously yeah. it's, it's violent and adult and i was seven so i couldn't watch it um yeah, and uh, well, directing by Graham Harper is great as well. But yeah, you got good points. Oh, I have to say the entire concept before, uh, like mm. that, it's it's great. Like, a what if scenario for Doctor Who is just so vast and yeah, so it, many directions yeah, they could go with it. I agree, and they did it beautifully. Like beautifully, it's. Uh, I would say. Um, it's pacing, like fantastic, oh, yeah. perfect. Like I usually criticise the pacing of episodes. You shall call it. There's a the slow map. scene here or there, but this one. This one paces everything perfectly. Like that, no scene goes on too long. Yeah. No scene rushes through it. It's just everything goes at the right amount of time it needs to, and finishes when it needs to. Yeah. And it it make every moment count. Something is pretty much always happening. There's always a reason for a scene. It's not just a scene there to. Talk about something. I'd say probably the slowest scene, which could have been cut, is when they're in the TARDIS explaining how it's dying. But it still kind of adds it. I mean, it's still, yeah. you know, it's the, the TARDIS is dying because the Doctor's not there. But, I mean, it is quite a slow scene, you know. Yeah, because you could, well... It's okay, but it's kind of explaining the basics, which to us being super fans, we know everything. So it's like, okay, okay, next bit, next bit. We're just time traveling. Let's get uh, to I did, I do kind of appreciate that. But yeah, it's still, it's still really well acted and really and, well. And actually, in that, in that regard, that is the moment that, because Donna, up to this point, while she kind of realizes the effect, of the doctor she's and stuff. Totally she, yeah, she, yeah. She, she never met the guy. Yeah. Yeah. She she only seen like all these horrible events happening, and she's just being told by Rose that um, you know, oh, this guy, you know, he's yeah, he's pretty good. But it, I it. think this is the moment where it kind of clicks for her. Like, yeah. what the heck is this thing? Yeah. It's just you know, that's like probably the slowest scene of them all, and that's it. Yeah, but it's, it's, still even, a good it's scene. not even slow, really. And it's short is what the best thing about it is. Yeah. But yeah, it's that's that's what I'd say is probably the weakest scene, but it's barely weak, it's you know, still decent seven out of ten. And I would say, just to be a little bit different, because the other thing I would say was is the acting, but um, I wouldn't uh, well, I I else, yeah, so. um I I would like to say just seeing a lot of these scenes from various different perspectives seeing, you know, the events of the runaway bride from the ground, from everybody's panicky view, yeah. you don't get to see that because, well, you're with, with the, the doctor. doctor. You're in this high ground, the one that's facing it, not yeah. you know, down the streets, and you get to see you know, all of these like moments, actually. What what it's like to see the hospital being taken away, what it's like with this adipose thing, you know. Well, the main one is Voyager of a Down, that Dan, mushroom yeah. clown. Jesus. No, we won't know what that was like in terms of, like, oh, this, is, this giant ship just made a U-turn, you know. We won't know what that was like, but, like, I mean, it's hard. It's yeah, really okay, hard. bad points. Um... And they're mainly just nitpicks, though, really, you know, like, um, what was the woman's really kind of aim of why choose Donna, I mean, was she told by the trickster, you yeah. know? Probably. That could have been a small, uh, just a small thing at the end. Not everything needs to be said, necessarily. I know, it, yeah, true, but I don't know, I just, what was her reason for doing it, you know? Um, why did Rose know everything? I mean, if, if it was said that she was kind of if she was purposely kind of changing stuff for Donna's future by choosing the ticket that won the raffle, you know, that it would have made more sense. But I don't know why she was so omnipotent is probably one thing. I just wanted a reason why she was so, like, she knew everything and, you know, mm. so smart about it. Yeah, it was... I mean, it, was, it wasn't necessarily bad, but I just like an explanation. Um, and then, yeah, just... It's really nothing really wrong. I say like the Atmos, like would that have really happened still with all that happening? But you know, hey ho, would the Sontarans would have wanted such a damaged Earth? I guess it would make it an yeah, easier target. Easy target. They just wanted it as a breeding ground, and there's still space for it. There's just lack of people. Yeah, unless the radiation would have messed up with the. Well, well then they wanted the there's entire. There's still a heck of a lot yeah. of space. <laughs> I guess, yeah, but there's, there's only kind of two Besides, points then, really. Would well, they, would they necessarily be affected by the um, radiation? Radiation? I don't know. Oh, no, well, they I remember a Sontaran experiment, they kind of ate 
radiation. Was that radiation? Thing. I think it was like, like he, it was the radiation, the energy he took. There was energy too much energy. No, yeah, and then the energy. energy. Ate him. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know what type of energy it is. But yeah, I mean, they're just nitpicks, really. Why did Rose know everything? And yeah, so on, so on. Do you have any which on that? <laughs> well, I had three down, but like some of them have been kind of quashed. Um, I, I wrote jumps around a bit much, but um, I real I actually I I think that kind it of, kind of has to to fit yeah. in everything. Yeah, and and uh, actually I I, fit, I I wrote that at the beginning, not because I kind of, oh, kind right, of yeah. forgot about that. Uh, I kind of uh, I asked why is it a beetle? Like you mentioned that it, it is odd. But I think it worked. I think I think it's still kind of a creepy creature, a kind I, of crawling up your back. It I does think kind the of... squid might have had a better thing with its kind of suckers, like a kind of. Mm. I know. But it, it might not have that's, made that's it, wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been so thematically um, entwined with the um, trickster as much. Yeah. It would be odd to be combined with. Wait, with if it was trickster. like a black kind of. The, the, the beetle kind of makes sense. It's black and sleek, and yeah, it kind of fits. Yeah. And the only other thing I had down was the villain's motivation, but of course the trickster. I didn't even really think out in that regard. But, uh, Tricksters for good, but yeah, hey ho. Just so little. I mean, I, I really, I really don't have a lot to say in terms of negativity. Okay. Yeah. So I guess nerdy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Of course, the hand that falls out and drops a sonic screwdriver is actually David Tennant's. Uh, the Doctor mentions the Trickster's Brigade, which is obviously someone who works with the Trickster or sold their soul to the Trickster to then uh, do that. And the Trickster is obviously from the Sarah Jane Adventures, which are oh, such a good one. Bad Wolf, yeah, that's the thing which has happened before. Mm. Um, and it revisits many of her past episodes. I mean, <laughs> as we've mentioned, Voyage of the Damned, Runaway Bride, uh, Smith and Jones, and any others? Oh, and the uh, Partners in Crime. So yeah, those are the ones. Um, so this episode was actually filmed early in production um, because they wanted the clip of Rose to appear in the um, cinematic trailer. Mm. So they actually, this is one of the first episodes that they um, filmed. I think they continued filming it a bit later. No, I, th I think the... Um, no, it was filmed alongside Midnight because while David Tent was working on that one, uh, Catherine yeah, Tate was working on this one because I yeah. mean that saves time and money. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's a lot about um, on uh, how like Graham Harper kind of decided to film it as well. Uh, obviously, Torchwood is mentioned and Sarah Jane is all mentioned. Then they're in the next story. Um, um, I would say something. The um, Bees disappearing is a reference oh, yeah. to that actually Bees, happened. Oh yeah, bees. Yeah, keep keeps going. Um, something on Donna's back was first heard in Fires of Pompeii. Yep, when he goes, there's something. That was that was the best thing about series four, how it all built up. The Doctor Donna, it's such a subtle thing, but it was mm. still there. You know, it was so good. Yeah. I like the hybrid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm better than that. Are you uh, a hybrid? Look at this! I have a pen! I have a pineapple! Oh! Hybrid! Oh! Hybrid pen pineapple! Um. Yeah, it's kind of it. The cloister bell obviously has been heard multiple times before. Um, uh, first time in the Goggle Poise. But yeah, there's kind of this, um, bits here and there. The episode filmed in, um. Oh, what looked like China was, um. recreated in, um. Cardiff, um, using um, Chinese people living in South Wales invited to be background extras via Facebook. <laughs> How interesting. And were paid like 70 quid for the day. Yeah, this one, this was one of the episodes from Series 4 to uh, be nominated for a Hugo Award, which, you know, is well deserved because it's bloody Definitely. good. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh... Anything else? The um, red hair thing, when she said, ah, uh, come in, red hair. It's free for red hair. Uh, yeah, it's apparently because um, red is considered very lucky in China. Oh. That actually makes, very grammatically makes sense. Um, 
Ah, oh, okay, here's one. The Time Beetle, its design was actually influenced by the giant spider of Metabetus Free that clung to Sarah Jane Smith's back in Planet oh, that, of the that Spiders. Does make sense. Uh, the Beetle's normal Earth like appearance was deliberate. Prosthetic designer Neil Gorton thought that familiarity would ease the narrative and cited the cat nuns from New Earth and Jadoon from Smith and Jones as examples, like, you know, uh, you know animals from Earth made for the space. Uh, it was made through fiberglass uh, and fitted on a harness in order not to burden Catherine Shade's performance. Uh, episode director Graham Harper explained that in the episode's con- commentary that only psychic characters such as Luis's from Fires of Pompeii were aware of a Beatles' existence. Ah. Mm. And yeah, Trickster uh, Russell T. Davis explicitly links the Time Beetle to the villain from the Sarah Jane Adventures uh, in Doctor Who Confidential. Like, mm. he purposely is definitely the Trickster. Because uh, I think he, he says that he would purposely in the wedding go after, I think, the Doctor. And maybe he went back in time to do this. Mm. So, yeah. Um, this, um, I, I mentioned about this, what if scenarios, um, but um, apparently there is a um, big Finnish audiobook with a similar storyline starring the 8th Doctor called um, Unnatural History. Oh, yes, I heard of that one, yeah. Where, um, you, yeah, it's, it's kind of along the same lines where he disappears and isn't... Lin... Romana. Is it Lala Ward? Is it? Is it? Or isn't it? Um, hang on, let's check. I don't know. Um, it's something like it that. It might have been... Well, actually, is that the same one that I mentioned in the animation podcast? It might be. With the and then seeing the... Um, Could be. That's oh, a novel, not a, um, audio. Sorry. Yeah, actually, where where I was um, congratulating that scene where Jacqueline King was, was all depressed, like Graham Harper purposely did it for that, yeah. because the last we saw her, she was singing, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, and then the next we see her, he was like, that is her scene, yeah. and the focus is kept on her, like Donna never comes in focus. Yeah. Um, um, when um, the death of Torchwood is mentioned, apparently a variation of the Torchwood theme plays. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's uh, that's kind of it. There's lots of interesting stuff about it. Um, oh, uh, someone who played Chancho, uh, Chanvo in Utopia, uh, returned for this one. Uh-huh. Um, and Ben Reapton, Wrighton, even Ben Wrighton played Oliver as a medical student, also appeared as we know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's, uh, lots lots happened in this one. Lots to do with um, it. It's, it's good. Yeah. So conclusion, comrade. So this episode, wow. I mean, from I mean, from pretty much the beginning, like you get stuff happening. Like it's fantastically paced. There's so much excellent like visual design. So much. Big moments happening with, like, of course, the death of the Doctor and all the repercussions that come from that. And just showing just how important Donna is. I mean, you don't even take that entirely into granted, necessarily, until you watch this. And heck, there are even things that Donna did which you can't even see, like that family in um, Pompeii, they died. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And all the other stuff on other planets, yeah. Um, Way Pompeii shouldn't have happened. Oh. Um, There's a mistake. That's because they yeah. caused it to happen because they had to push the button. Yeah, but the thing still invaded. They, they press the button. It's yeah. True. Doesn't mean somebody else didn't press the button. Who would have known about it? A curious kid. <laughs> <laughs> kid just walks into a volcano and pushes the button. Oh, yeah, no, you know. That, yeah, there we go. There's, there's a bad point. <laughs> but that doesn't really count for but this yes, episode. They yes. won't move things. Yeah, no. It's fantastic. The acting here is fantastic. Visuals and everything that happens, like there's always something going on in every scene. And like it's very hard hitting. Every good point, there's like something even worse. Ten happening. times worse hits you in the face. Yeah. Everything from 
like being kicked out of a job to the entirety of living in London exploding and like Holocaust happening. Like it's fantastic. They go like far beyond what most stories would bother to do. Like it's just so good. Like I can point out pretty much any scene in this and just talk about how good it is. And there is pretty much not a lot wrong with it at all. Like a lot of the problems we mentioned nitpicks. Really nitpicks. Like not even any major nitpicks, but just tiny nitpicks. And like the good very, very far outweigh that. Like very far. And because of that, I have to say, this is my first ten out of ten. Like, hey. I, it's just, I can't say, like, I always thought of it as kind of a hidden kind of gem, something that not a lot of people talk about so much. But not until I watched it again yesterday did I just remember just how fantastic, like, everything is in this. Like, it's so consistently good throughout. I think it's probably one of, or maybe the best episode, I think, in series four. For its, what it yes. tried to do and yes. executed it. Yes, I would. And for its time span. I mean, I need, to, I need to rewatch some of the other episodes, but I would. Yeah, I'd say that. It was. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe the exception of Midnight, possibly. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. get to that. We'll get to that. Okay, so, my conclusion Turn Left is memorable. Those are probably the best words any film or TV series mm. could want to get memorable. It sticks out for its originality in the now 53 years of Doctor Who. I hope it's never tried again, though, like, Pandora Opens is like a distant cousin if Doctor wasn't there, the mm. universe dis yeah. Um, it's an intriguing concept, what happens if a Doctor died? Answer, stuff goes to shit. <laughs> this episode is really depressing, really, really depressing, and God, I love it for that. The story makes you think things will get better and then rams you with a car, and then a truck, and then a lorry. It's it's it it hits you so hard. Uh, Jacqueline King, I gotta give a shout out, you know, as Sylvia because she got it so right. The depressed feel and those cutting lines just no, nah, just hit you right in the heart. Especially the way she delivers them, so good. And my heart always goes out to Donna. Uh, this story often gets overlooked in series four because everybody's like, oh, stolen earth, you know, journey's end. Oh, everybody's together. Just because everybody's together doesn't mean it's a better story than this one. This one had such more a bigger thing to try and do, and it actually managed to do it really, really well. And I can't give it a 10 out of 10, but it definitely gets a very solid at least 9.5 out, <laughs> out of 10, 9 out of 10. It's dark, it's original, and it really stands strong in the history of Doctor Who. But yeah, it's... it's Close to ten, but there's just others that I think are. If I was having to, to put ten to ten, I, I always I always consider the ten point like anything from like just if we're gonna put like a hundred point scale like some people do anywhere from ninety six to a hundred. Like, oh yeah, in that kind of range. So while I might prefer other episodes which are in a ten, doesn't mean it can't be a ten. It's yeah. a range. Like I, I said, I said before. Um, I think with um, what was it? Either. I think it was Mind Robber, which Mind was kind Robber. of at the end of the nine scale, kind of. Yeah, I think if it was like a hundred, I'd give it ninety five. Like, mm. yeah, very. It's, it's on yeah. the high end. I just don't see. To me personally, it's just not a ten, probably because I just, I just really enjoy it like loads and loads and loads. But it's probably I enjoy it probably equally with Deadly Assassin, mm. kind of because Deadly Assassin is like kind of like you know again trying those concepts and really does I would deliver. Say, I'd say for the most part I would agree, but once again, like, The Earthly Assassin has episode 3, which knocks it. Yeah, pulls that, it. That, that is one issue. Like, it's not on your first watch, but on your second or third yeah. watch, that knocks it down for me just, just below. Yeah. This story really yeah. doesn't have an issue like that to me. Like, it's... It is an ace story. Mm. It is great. I mean, to be fair, this episode had a lot less time to fill up than Deadly Assassin. So. Yeah, true. I just, yeah, I just, to me, yeah, if it was like out of 100, it would be like 95, yeah, like if we were giving it. But yeah, I'd give it, if I was doing points, like 0.5. I just, yeah. Mm. It's not what I'd say 
hey, you want to try Doctor Who, watch this story. No, it's, it's just, uh, one you have to watch after you've watched all series. Oh, naturally. You've got to naturally. watch the ones all before it, before I say watch this one, and then you'll love this one far more. If you okay. came in just watching this one, oh, no, you probably wouldn't. about a seven. You wouldn't, no, less than that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I mean, well, perhaps a seven, because of the acting, I think the it's acting... It's still bloody good. Yeah, but I would say, to get the best enjoyment out of this, you watch have to everything watch before everything it. else, yeah. And watch Sarah Jane and watch Torchwood, so you have feelings for those characters as well, so you care about them, is what I'd say. But one thing which sucks about Done Left is the blooming Next Time trailer. Why did they show the Daleks in it? They did not need to show the Daleks in it. Why didn't they do this big build-up and then go, oh, it's the Daleks? And then, then the massive finding out of the exterminate over the thing would have made so much more of an impact. Mm, like, yeah. they didn't need to show it. They didn't need to. And, yeah, so... It, I, always, it always annoys me when I see that. I'm like, God, <laughs> damn it. I... I they even remember whether or not it bothered I mean, I don't think it bothered me at the time. I was like, oh my god, Oh yeah, the at the Daleks. time, but... I mean, it would be... It's like when frickin' Julian Bleach as Davros appeared in The Witches, you know, a magician's apprentice and Witches familiar. We'd seen no footage of him, and it was amazing. Yeah. But I guess they put the Daleks in the trainer, actually, for Series 4, so well, no, knew they were in it. Yeah, that's so, true. And there was, yeah. no, there was pretty much no other place they could have put them. Yeah. We'd already gone yeah, yeah. Episodes. But um I mean a Dalek finale would be nice again, which I think might be coming series ten, in my opinion. Possibly. I mean we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but yes. Uh so thank you very much for listening. Uh this Jimmy is you did. our yeah, Jimmy Jimmy you did. Uh, so that was our opinions on turn left. Tell us what you think below on what you thought on turn left. Mm. Maybe you totally hated it, maybe you're like, oh, I want Doctor, not Donna, God. Beatles and not my no, thing. No. So yeah, comment below what you think about it, and you know, tell us what you'd give it out of ten, and you know. So, yeah. subscribe or not, you know, get that blooming beetle off your back, and don't just go along with what this weird women say, you know. Women, <laughs> multiple. There's so many. Yeah, They're no. all coming for you. Yeah. So subscribe. I need to get away. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe they're telling you not to subscribe, so you know, just click oh. the subscribe just yes, in case. Yes, it's, it's, it's the reality, you see. So the choices are subscribe or not subscribe. But if you do, it will take you to a parallel universe. Everything could change. Everything will be better. Moffat will disappear. Everything will be good. <laughs> if you don't subscribe to us. <laughs> if you don't, it's Moffat forever. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye! Bye!